JavaScript was supposed to be a quick little scripting language. Nothing serious, nothing world-changing, just a side project slapped together in 10 days. Fast forward to today, and somehow it's running your fridge, your car, your grandma's toaster, and probably half the gotcha games you rage quit daily. How did we get here? Well, it all started back in 1995. Netscape, the company that basically built the early internet browser scene, realized it needed a way to make websites more interactive. So they turned to Brendan Eich, sorry if I butchered the pronunciation, and said, Hey, can you whip up a new programming language? Oh, and you have like 10 days. Brendan did what anyone would do under that kind of pressure. He improvised. He cobbled together a language that was kind of inspired by Scheme, a little bit like Java, and deeply cursed from the start. Originally, they called it Mocha, then LiveScript, and finally, JavaScript, purely as a marketing stunt to ride Java's hype wave. Spoiler, it had almost nothing to do with Java. Now you'd think a language born in 10 days with zero time for second thoughts would crash and burn, but no. Netscape's browser exploded in popularity, and JavaScript came baked right in. Microsoft, not wanting to be left out, created its own copycat version called JScript. Suddenly, every browser had some flavor of JavaScript, and if you wanted your website to actually work for real people, you basically had no choice but to use it. And then came Ajax in 2005, kicking off the era of Web 2.0 and making dynamic, real-time websites actually possible. JavaScript wasn't just surviving, it was thriving, like a stubborn weed in your backyard. From there, JavaScript did what any stubborn technology does. It started taking over everything. Node.js popped up in 2009, making it possible to run JavaScript on servers. Frameworks like Angular, React, and Vue turned front-end development into a JavaScript empire. Suddenly, you weren't just using JavaScript for websites. You were building mobile apps, desktop apps, games, even whole operating systems with it. Today, JavaScript is like glitter. It's everywhere. You'll never be able to fully get rid of it, no matter how hard you scrub. But here's where things get messy. JavaScript's wild. Hacked together roots never went away. It's a loosely typed language where 5 plus 5 gives you 55, and 5 minus 5 gives you 0. Because reasons, I guess? NPM, the Node Package Manager, became the biggest package registry ever, filled with millions of libraries, some of which exist purely to left pad a string with spaces. One guy unpublished his left pad library in 2016 and broke half the internet. Meanwhile, JavaScript developers live in constant fear of dependency hell, where updating one small library might randomly nuke your entire project. And don't even get me started on the endless framework churn. Every two months, there's a new hot framework promising to save us, and every year we add another one to the pile. I'll put it with the others. Hummer. So here we are. JavaScript wasn't designed to run the world. It wasn't even designed to last longer than a few marketing cycles, but it did. I'm tired, boss. It clawed its way into every corner of tech, powered by browser wars, corporate chaos, and sheer dumb luck. It's messy, it's brilliant, it's cursed, and it's not going anywhere. Next time you're yelling at your screen because some random NPM package broke your build at 2 a.m., just remember this famous Bruce Lee quote. 